Welcome back, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Quest for Glory 1. When last we left off, we had basically finished up the bulk of the stuff that we wanted to do in town, and are getting ready to head out into the valley proper. And, as you can still see, Otto is playing very happily with that yo-yo. Let us move on. Let us embark. Onwards for great journey. The breeze is cool, but you feel a shiver deep, um, deeper than just the cold. You are really on your own now that in this very dangerous place. All right, let's go this way. And we just keep walking down. Let us stop. Let's check this. We can't do much with that. Oh, hello. That's a goblin. Hello, goblin. Let us, uh, let us avoid you for the time being. You see your own reflection in the crystal clear water. The rocky shore is blissfully re relaxing. Let's go over there. No, over there. Over there. Go over there. Why you no go over there? Stop that. Let's go back up. And over. And, come on. All the way over. Let me go up. I think we bypassed it. Yes, we did. Ah, uh, such is the nature of uh, 90s style adventure games. You could quickly and easily get lost in some various places. The bright, sm um, the bright smell of fresh herbs mingles with the aroma of wood smoke as you come up the road to a hut by the side of the road. Do I have a rock? I pick up some stones. Yep, there we go. I have a feeling that bird needs to get moved. And... Yay! Now, why do this? Because I think there's something in the nest that we can pick up. You take the lovely gold ring out of the nest. You place the gold ring in your pack and the nest on the ground. Let's uh, open the door. You politely knock on the door. After a moment, you hear a, and the inside bolt slide open. Voice from inside. Come in! The fragrance of herbs mingles with some rather unpleasant odors as you enter the healer's house. Lovely day, ain't it? You look very healthy for an adventurer. You must be new. What can I do for you? I can sell you healing potions if you want, if you'd like. I also spell, um, buy um, bleh, spell components if you are interested in gathering some for me. Don't mind me. I have always have so much around here to do. Now, that gold ring is, in fact, her gold ring. That is quest one. Done. Oh, thank you for finding my ring. How I've missed this. Here's the six gold and two healing potions for your reward. We have done a nice thing, and we now have healing potions. Oh! You put the reward away, and she tells you... And tell her she is welcome as you leave to avoid being kissed again. Run away! Let's go by! Okay, um... She apparently wanted to thank me in more ways than one. I'm kind of glad we left. Let's move on. Moving on! Come on. Oh, the screen. Thank you. Garen has a hard time with, you know, going about places. Oh, I skipped dialogue or something. The Majestic Centaur watches you carefully. Ask for his name. I am Heinrich. I live in town with my daughter Hild, who sells our produce at the market. Hild. Hild is a bright little filly. I'm very proud of her. To whom are you speak trying to speak to? I am speaking to the ground! Gaia, listen to me! 
Farmer's Mart. Our stand is just to the northeast corner of Spielberg. The produce is not of the finest this time of year, but you will find not uh, you will not find better than um, the fruit I, I make, as I cannot pronounce your name, good centaur. I apologize. Harvest. We grow fine fruit in our little orchard and sell it at our stand in town. There you will find fresh cherries in spring, peaches in summer, and apples in fall. It is truly a sight to see. Let us go back. Farm. I can grow enough on this little plot to feed my family and the village. You should see this field during the summer. Field. There's much work. Uh, there's much work for me to do now, and I bid you a good day. Hang on. Brigands. The brigands attacked me a few months ago. I am a strong fighter, and my hooves are deadly. But there were too many of them. My right leg was broken, and there is no pride for a centaur who cannot run. If I had no, if I had not been for the unlikely intervention of their leader, I would be dead. Oh ho! Really? Their leader. The leader came up after the brigands attacked me and forced them to stop, ordered them not to hurt people from the town. Then, to my amazement, the leader gave me a healing potion and had me carried to the healer's house. Odd? It was hard to judge the leader, whose face was obscured by a large helm, but there was compassion unlike what I would expect from a brigand. Interesting. Healer. The healer lives just east of here. She is very skilled with potions. And very handsy from what we just witnessed. Personally, I'm not too keen on that. Let us ask about centaurs. We centaurs are very ancient and proud people. And that is all he's going to say on the matter. Let us talk about the Baron. I am sorry. I know very little of the Baron and his family. Alright, and that's enough out of us. Let's go this way. <clears throat> Scuttle at the speed of Silly. Now we head north. And that way. Go that way. Thank you. And we keep going this way. And that marks the end of the map, unfortunately. So let's go this way. One strange bush. I wonder what's in it. A goblin steps out of the bush. The goblin has a mean look in his eyes. You prepare for battle. Combat! You actually do have to manage your stamina and stuff. It's very much a uh, standard fighting affair. Stab. Stab until the enemy stops. Wow! You threw that dead goblin a long way. Which is impressive considering we're a thief. Let's go th I see you back there. You find five silver concealed in a pouch. You take the silver. You get no response. That's right. Scarper away. Oh, I see you too. It's Droopy. <gasps> Is it Droop? The same from Vandelver? No, it can't be. It cannot be him. Go away. You are not him. All right. Let's go down this way. When more of them decide to get ballsy. Do, 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 do. Come on, get over there. Yeah, it gets kind of difficult to uh, press on the very edge of the screen sometimes. Alright, and we go this way. All the way down. Oh, did you see that? Did you catch him? That was a bandit. This is a ring formed... This is a ring formed of large and rather unusual looking mushrooms. The tree are uh, look more vibrant than most of the forest at the center of the clearing. Let us walk into the clearing. Okay. 
Now, I forget exactly what this is used for, but I have a distinct impression it's probably a safe place to rest. If you're caught out here at night, you can't do much with that. I'm not going to do anything with those mushrooms because, if, you know, my mythology and, and stuff background is uh, has has led me to believe disturbing fairy rings is a bad is bad for your health. Let us save. But just to test that, I'm going to I've just saved. So let's pick the mushroom. Pick a small handful of mushrooms and carefully put them in your backpack. Really? Oh. Well, all right then. I have six mushrooms. Okay then. I don't advise eating them. Oh. A beautiful white stag is foraging for food. Let us approach it. You seem to have startled the white stag. It runs away. Follow it! Follow the stag! Quickly! And... Here, we have found Irana's Peace. You follow the stag into a forest, into this forest, forest corner. You feel as though the eyes of the forest are watching you. You watch the stag, fascinated by him with his grace and beauty. There's something special about this place. You get no response. You can't do much with that. You'd better alter your strategy. The trees mostly just beach. <laughs> They're most pop uh, poplar neighbors, neighbors, or pine fir fjords, oak, a. Eh? Ah, oh, God, that. Ah, oh. oh, this is so. Ah, oh. the the pun the tree puns. They're. <laughs> Uh, at least the bark is not as bad as their bite. Okay. Something about the old oak tree makes you reluctant to climb upon it. I don't want to climb it. The rocks are much too heavy to move. Now, this, I remember, you can, in fact, rest out here. And, in fact... You probably should. You can feel the gentle breeze wafting its way in between the woods. The scent of fresh flowers and green growing things fill you with a sense of peace. Let's go here. Let us rest for ten minutes. After ten minutes of rest, you feel better. And if I recall, where do we can we see our character statistics? Ah, yes. As you can see, we actually leveled up in several um, categories. When you uh, engage in combat, you tend to uh, level up various things. Like, for example, we leveled up our strength. As well as our intelligence for um, coming up with interesting solutions. Our vitality because we survived combat. And luck because, well, we tend to get stuff, uh, we tend to crit and stuff. Our throwing increased when we threw those rocks. Our magic hasn't improved, but that's no big surprise there. Alright, so let us go back here. Let us rest for an hour. After 60 minutes of rest, you feel better. Ah, and it is now starting to get night. The night is still young on day one. Now... We should probably not be out here at this time of night. But we are anyway. Nothing happens. And we continue our walk. Let's go this way. Nighttime is the fun time. Oh, hello. By golly, it's an antwerp. Antwerps are an endangered species list. They are rarely seen. Let us talk to the antwerp. You get no response. Let us touch the antwerp. You bravely attack the bouncing beast with your bare hands. You bravely attack the bouncing beast with your bare hands. Have at thee! Have at thee, bouncy creature of bounciness. 
What is this? You find a keyhole concealed in the crack of a rock. Interesting. Let's save before we do anything with this. Now, no monsters are going to show up because the Antwerp is in the background, so we don't need to fear being attacked. And as long as we don't attack the Antwerp, we are fine. The lock is beyond your present skill. You might ha it might help if you find it if you had a key, or at least a better set of tools. Yeah, that is the case. So, let us, uh... What is this? Oh, healing potions. That's right. We got those. Okay, let's, uh... Let us move on without damaging the Antwerp. Let us go before the Antwerp decides to get, you know, frisky. Hostile intent is evident. You prepare for battle. What? Oh! Hi! Oh, that's gonna hurt. Run! We need to run. Ah. Uh, well, folks, that's what can happen when you, uh, don't, uh... When you don't heed advice and go around at night, especially when you're kind of made of Weedabix and, and string, as far as your health is concerned. Luckily, we saved before this happened. Let us restore. Let us go back to Irana's rest. Or Irana's peace, rather. And sleep the night away. Um, rest until, uh, rest all night. You know you will sleep comfortably and well in this quiet and protected corner of the woods. And I fall over like I'm dead. <laughs> and night passes. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. Huzzah! We are still alive! Let us save before anything bad happens. Saving. Mm, let's see. Let's go this way. Alright. There's the fairy ring. Let's go this way. Ah, we found the back edge of town. The fruit of this tree is withering and swarming with hornets. I think it might be. I think you bet. You think better about picking it. Yeah, you're right. Let's uh, let's go this way. Let's go down. An old archery target looks like and look as though it has not seen use in some time. This is where we can actually do some uh, practice with uh, with some ranged combat or ranged abilities. Yeet, yeet, yeet. Riveting combat. Let us pick up stuff. Nothing. Ha there's nothing to do there. You feel the holes where daggers and arrows once hit, tar hit this target. Okay, so... Well, we've basically wasted all of our rocks. But that is okay, because uh, we can always pick up more over by the healer's house. Or, if we were actually using a dagger, we probably could have used the dagger um, in place. Oh, there we go. Let's go over this way. Because I don't know about you, but we spot that. The roar of the falls fills your ears, and the cold spray dampens your face as you approach. Let us get up this. The rocks are too slick from the spray uh, for 
of the waterfall for your limited climbing abilities. Let us keep doing it. Persistence is key. We will eventually overcome. Come on. Hit. Hit. Come on. We will get up here. You cannot stop us. We will prevail. Okay. On the plus side, our strength went up, as did our agility and our climbing skill. So, let us continue. There's nothing to do there. Climb! We must continue. Let us continue quickly. Quickly. We can do it. We can do it. We look for a good place to climb. Yes. Yes. And we did it. The climb was almost too easy. Just like climbing a ladder. That, my friends, is a good indication that we have just leveled our skill enough to succeed. And our strength as well. So, there is that. And our luck. But we, our stamina basically took a nice big one. Let us open this door. You knock three times. A voice um, from within says, Just a minute! Just a minute! Please move away from the door! What? Oh crap. It is easy, just like climbing a ladder. Nobody's here, I guess. I think we might have just unintentionally ding-dong ditched him. I am sorry. I did not mean to do that. You knock three times. Just a minute! Just a minute! Please move away from the door! Okay, let's see if we can actually get over here instead. There we go. If I recall correctly, you can get smacked off that ledge. Oh, hello! Come on in! Come on in! Hello! How are you? Yeah, we've met before. I'm Ari the Hermit. That's me. My father was an hermit, and my mother was an hermit, so I took up my job rightly. Don't have too many visitors. Hermits don't, you know. Uh, hermits don't, you know. Part of the job description. I likes to see a new face, though. Good to air another. Uh, yeah. Another speaking besides myself. So, is what you want? Uh, what you. What can I do for you? This cave is cold and clammy, and it smells like mildew and wet dog hair in here. The walls are covered with phosphorescent fungus. The fungus glows eerie in the cave's dim light. The fire is down to, uh, to a set of dimly glowing coals. Yes, this is Henry the Hermit. Or, as his vernacular would indicate, Henry. Henry the Hermit. You see uh, the shaggiest little man, you think it's a man anyway, you've ever seen. Hermit. And hermit is one what lives alone, far away from what, from them to, uh, what talks too much about or asks too many questions. Hermits are shy, quiet types who don't say much. My brother's airy hardly says a word in years. My sister Ortiz hasn't spoken since she was six. I never talked at all. Yes, we hermits knows how to keep our mouths shut. Let us ask about this interesting cave. Well, it's dark and damp, and the water's worse, so, so there's not a moment's quiet. The ceiling drips, and the walls are slimy, and it's always cold. But, oh well. Says us, it's home. It's home. <coughs> oh, wow. Ugh. Pardon me, that... That did not go down well. Let's ask about his family. The family lives pretty far apart from each other. We're all hermits, you know. 
And that's basically all we're going to get about that. The falls. Yes, there's what's called the flying falls. I've done some flying falls around here myself. That porch gets and gets slippery sometimes. <laughs> Bladder. I know some magic. Erasmus the Wizard taught me some spells. He's what's put the spell on my ladder so um, the brigands don't get up. Them won't climb the rocks and get um, a door open in, in, in their nose. Erasmus. He's my friend. He and Fenris. How of a wizard he is. I hear he, his mouth about something to see in the north. I don't make it out much. And he's pretty busy, so I don't see him much, him too often. But when we do all get together, we can have, we sure have, have, we'll have some fun. He loves to play his games, he does. Fenris. Fenris is Erasmus's familiar. Or is, but, or is that the other way around? Ah, the dynamic between those two. Anyway, games. Erasmus' favorite game is Mage's Maze. I have to be a magic user to play it, though. Erasmus is awfully good at it. Back. Spells. The spells, what I know, is pretty simple, maybe. But I like them. I can make my ladder show up and uh, my door close and even get rid of those pesky... Um, them old pests using the trigger spell, you see. Trigger? It's a spell what sets off uh, um, other spells. Like when you want to see the ladder, you, tri uh, you cast trigger and there you have it. Large as life. Of course, you got to have the spell on invisible ladder um, to make it visible first. But it is as it, um, as it uses. But it has its uses. I think I have to scroll uh, with the spell if you, know, if you know some magic that is. Scroll. If you'd be wanting to learn the spell, I'd be pleased to share it with you. It's just getting moldy and me at had in place. You want it? Uh, yes. Yes, please. Please. Yes, please. Let's see. How did Erasmus do it? Oh, yes. He summons it with the trigger. There it goes. There he is. And he has given us a spell. The scroll vanishes even as you read the magical runes upon it. You now have the knowledge to cast the trigger spell. Huzzah! Thank you very much. Henry is a fairly nice little hermit. Let's talk about the brigands. Nasty sort they are, and they is. I see them sneaking around the woods all the time. Other than them and then the warlock. That has nothing to do with them. The warlock? He's not uh, not so bad. Got a good sense of humor. He has. He gets, a giggle, he gets the giggles just thinking of him. I mean, I guess the giggles just thinking of him. <laughs> he comes by at times to chat. Borrows the mirror, I, uh, mirror what I borrowed from Erasmus. He did. Mirror? What mirror? Magic mirror reflection, it has. If you use it, then a nasty spell was cast at you. It's, it was what sent it back to the one who cast it. Don't do it to others, I see. <laughs> do unto others, I say. <laughs> now, that's a very powerful artifact. I don't know why a bandit would have it. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Let's see, can we interact with him in any other way? Let's see. Will he take our mushrooms? No thanks. I got I got I'm not much of one of those in the, of those tree snacks. Tree snacks. Um Let's see, can we offer him food? Yes, no. We are not going to you we're not going to give him our leather jerkin. We we kinda need that. There's no point in trying to do that with one of those. Henry is wide awake, and it makes it impossible for for you to sleep. What? 
I have food. The rations are tasteless, but filling. Oh yeah, you do actually need to eat in this game, too, if I recall. Um, let me go up here. All right, let's, uh, I think we're done with this part, uh, with Henry here, so let's, uh, go out there. If you ever need a place to stay at night and you're in the area, you be, I could be willing to put you up for a night for some rations and a couple of games of cribbage. I will certainly be, I will certainly, um, remember that. You pick up a few small rocks. It doesn't say much. All right. Pick up more rocks. And more rocks. And more rocks. And once more rocks. You're carrying so much that you can hardly move. You better drop something. You can, in fact, overexert yourself and kill yourself in this game, so. But we can explore that for next time. For when we come back, folks. As soon as we can turn you to face the camera. Come on, Garen. Go this way. Thank you. But when we come back, folks, uh, we shall go explore around. We've learned a few things today. That Aranus Peace is a uh, very good place to, um, to nap for the night. That there's a hermit. And more importantly, that both the bandit leader is not who they appear to be. And that their warlock has a powerful spell reflecting mirror. These are all very important things, but who are they? Why do they do the things they do? And how do they behave? Well, maybe we'll find that out sometime later. Or maybe in the next video. Who knows? Until then, I will catch you next time, folks. I will see you then. Later.